Hello, families. Let's talk about how you, as a parent of a Baltimore City Public School student, can open a new account with the campus portal as a parent or guardian to be able to access electronically certain important information about your child, like the report card grades, their attendance, their assignment completion throughout the year, and you're also going to be able to update information like your student contact information or your family information. If let's say you, as a parent, change your phone number or your email at some point down the road. That you should be able to do that, and if you cannot, or you run into any issues with any of these features, just make sure you contact your child's homeroom teacher, or you contact the front office of the school. Now, this is going to be the same for any school for Baltimore City Public Schools. So even if you don't belong to Lakeland, if you're not a Lakeland Lion, that's okay. This will be able to help you out as well. And we'll also talk about about the difference because this is going to be a laptop desktop view. If you're looking at it from a smartphone, it's going to be a little narrow, but the process is thankfully very streamlined and it's going to look almost identical, just on a narrower view. So starting on this view、um, from a computer, you're going to go to the top menu, which you can see parent or guardian, and then you're going to click on that, and then you're going to just scroll down to where it says campus portal, and then you're going to click on that,、um, and make sure that you once again you go to the website baltimorecityschools.org. That was the main page that we started from, and then from there you're going to go here where you can then log in if you are an existing user that has credentials already, or you're going to create a new account for those who are transferring in and new to the district. Or have a student that's entering for the first time to school, and you're doing this for the first time. Now, for those of you who did it from the mobile view, the only real difference is that the menu is not visible from the top. Instead, there's the universal menu icon, which is three horizontal bars in the top right corner. You click on that, and then you're going to scroll down to where it says Parent or Guardian, and then you're going to click on that. Scroll down to where it says Campus Portal. And then you're going to click on that to get to this same page. And once you click on create a new account, that's when you're going to get to see the same exact form. It's just again going to be a little narrower on a smartphone view, but you're just going to fill out this information with all the basic stuff. You know, your first name and last name as a parent. Make sure you have your email and your cell phone that match what you registered with with your child. If it has changed since then, you're going to have a problem. So you're going to want to make sure you're using the same exact information that you used to register. If you did not provide an email, that should be okay. You should be able to still do this, but again, if you run into an issue, make sure that you contact the front office because you're going to need both to be able to verify your new account and then open it and sign in for the first time. So once you've selected all the proper information, your relationship, you filled in the student first and last name based on the birth certificate.、Uh, select your school, and here's a hint: you don't have to go to this whole menu to find Lakeland. It's number twelve. Lakeland Elementary Middle is zero zero twelve, and and then you're going to put in the date of birth, the what grade they're in. Uh, be aware that Lakeland, in particular, not every school does this. Not every school has pre-K, but we have a dual language program where you can start pre-K and take it a little early if you just barely missed the September 1st cutoff for being four years old. So if your child is born like in mid or end of September,、uh, they can do a second year of pre-K, and they should still select pre-K. Uh, in that circumstance, so that would be something you would do only specifically for that. But if you're not sure, you can again, you can contact the child's teacher or the front office. But the student ID number is important. That's a seven-digit number that starts usually with a one. And if you don't know what that is, it's not. There are other ID numbers that may pop up here and there, but the student number is specifically what we're looking for. And just contact your child's teacher or the front office to get that number. And then you're going to enter that here and put in your initials, and then click on Get Access Code. Once you get your access code sent to you by text, which should be a six-digit number, in this example, it's just one 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 one. So if that were the case, you would enter that in the dialog box where it's expecting you to put in your temporary code, and then you click on the verify code button here to the right, and then it's going to refresh this page, and you're going to see this actually bottom message now appear that's going to identify your username. And this is not going to be your username. This is an example, but your username is going to be your email address that you either initially signed up when you and registered your. Child, or the what that you've just defined now in the form. If you never provided one to begin with, it's the one that you just defined previously. And remember that because when you click on here where it says click here, it's going to once again refresh the page so that you're going to get to put in your username. And then you're going to put in the username here and、uh, just click on the blue button to submit. Once you do that, put it exactly as is, that whole email completely. And then you're going to actually want to open up your email application, whatever that may be. If you use a third-party app on your phone, for example, like、uh, Yahoo or Outlook.com or Hotmail or AOL or Gmail, or if this, if it's the native. Uh, like your iPhone mail app or your Samsung native mail app, whatever it is, open up your email, and you're going to get one from Infinite Campus pretty soon, if not immediately. 
And if you don't see an email from Infinite Campus that has a link inside of it for you to click on, check your junk mail or your spam folder because maybe it went there. And when you open up that email and you click on that link that's inside of it, then you are going to get this page to refresh. Once again, that page that you just were at is going to refresh it to this. It's going to open up a new page to do this. And now you're going to get to define your password. So just create a strong password. Again, don't just do a generic word that people can guess. Try to mix in either an uppercase or a lowercase character, at least one and a number. That's usually a good way to go. And it'll tell you how strong your password is. You know, if it's a very low percentage, it may not even let you do it. So just make sure you think about one you can remember that's reasonably strong. And then you uh, click submit and the blue button. And then there you go. Your password's been set. And now you just click on back to login and it's going to take you back to this page where now you can enter in your credentials. So now you're going to log in for the very first time with those new credentials. So where it says parent username, put that email address, that's your username. And then the password, the one that you just created, click on login. And there you go. You're, that's That's it. We're finished with the process at this point. And now from this point forward, you don't have to create an account. Remember when we went to the campus portal section of the website, you just click on the login icon from there to log in because now you have credentials and you can just put this in and it'll get to this page and you'll enter. On another video, we can talk about navigating the actual campus portal and what you see in there. But for now, this concludes the video on how to start and create a new parent account under the campus portal.